Welcome to Trader UK, where we discuss money management and how to grow your wealth. Today, I'm answering a couple of questions that have popped up on my channel recently. Should I invest in premium bonds? And is now the best time to invest in premium bonds? Welcome back to my current subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, hit subscribe, like the video and leave a comment. I'll then make sure you stay up to date with all my future content. Now, my most viewed video on YouTube today is titled How Much I Earn with £50,000 of Premium Bonds, which I've linked in the description so you can check it out after if you haven't already. As it's my most viewed video, it's clear that premium bonds are an option that people consider when investing. So today, I thought I would give my opinion on whether premium bonds are currently a good investment. So first of all, let's take a look at the NSNI website and see how premium bonds compare to the other NSNI savings accounts. With premium bonds, you can invest from as little as £25 all the way up to £50,000. You can access your money at any time and they will enter you in a prize draw each month where you can win from £25 to £1 million. Every £1 you invest will get you one ticket in that draw. All the prizes that you win are tax free. And the total prize fund is 1.4% of everybody's investment. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to get 1.4% return on your investment. Most people get drastically under this and a few people get drastically over this amount. Then you have the Junior ISA. Unfortunately, this product is for under 18s only. However, it does have an attractive interest rate, 3.25%. I'm going to skip over this one as it won't apply to most of us. Then you have income bonds. Income bonds, you have a minimum investment of £500, but you can invest all the way up to £1 million. You can withdraw your funds at any time. There's no charge for doing that. And the rate is variable, but they give a gross rate of 1.15 or 1.16%. They pay you gross, which means you need to declare this on a tax return and pay tax on the interest that you receive. If you have an available ISA allowance, they also have a direct ISA account where you can save from £1 all the way up to £20,000, your annual ISA allowance. There's no notice period for withdrawing funds and there's no penalty for withdrawing funds. The rate is variable and the rate they give there is 0.9% and any income up to that £20,000 investment mark is going to be tax free because it's within the ISA. They then have the direct saver account with interest rate of 1%. You can invest from as little as £1 and all the way up to £2 million. You don't need to give any notice to withdraw funds and there is no penalty as well. The rate is variable and the interest you receive is taxable. They pay it gross, so again, you'll need to declare it on a tax return and pay any tax due. And the final one is the investment account. Investment account has a 0.8% return from minimum of £20 up to £1 million. No notice, no penalty, variable rate. And again, interest is paid gross, so you'll need to declare it on a tax return. The only difference between the direct saver and the investment account really is the fact that the direct saver account is an online account. You manage it via the web, whereas the investment account is NSNI's traditional uh, by way of post account. So that's why they give you a slightly lower interest rate because it's more labor intensive. So after comparing all of NSI's portfolio of products, I think it's clear to see that there is no standout option unless you happen to be under 18, in which case the junior ISA is pretty attractive. But for everyone else, the savings rates are just so low at the moment. Any interest is going to be minimal. Of course, that's not the fault of NSI. The Bank of England base rate is currently 0.1%, which is great news for those looking to borrow money, but really bad news for us looking to save money. So what if we look further afield? What other savings accounts are out there that could yield better returns? A quick search on money.co.uk highlights the best rates available to us. 
First of all, if we look at savings accounts with instant access to your money, just like you would have with the premium bonds, you can see that the rates tend to be around the 1% mark, which is pretty comparative with most of the NSNI accounts. The best product shown here is the RCI account with easy access. You can open it from £100 and you'll get a rate of 1.05%. Now, if we look at some of the longer term investment accounts where you won't have access to your money for a period of time, you can see rates as high as 1.55%, but you're going to be tying your money up for three years with that account with no access. So for me, an extra half a percent just isn't worth it. You can see as well the lead product, the RCI Bank Fixed Rate Bond, needs a minimum of £1,000 to open the account. It's also a fixed rate over three years, which means if next year interest rates do go back up and there are more attractive products on the market, you're going to be fixed in for at least three years there. I think that in this situation, we have to accept that savings rates are going to be terrible and they probably will be terrible for some time into the future. Governments are going to encourage spending rather than saving in an attempt to boost the economy. So they will have to keep interest rates low. And I know that saying that might lead you to think, well, actually, then putting my money into a three year fixed rate savings account and collecting my 1.5% interest isn't such a bad idea then. But I would much rather have access to my money at the moment. Trouble with the economy brings opportunity, whether that's opportunity in the housing market, like we saw in 2008, 2009, or possibly in the stock market, like we've seen recently. There's a number of companies trading at a fraction of their usual prices. I've put a link in below to show you a recent video where I've seen 100% gains in just a few weeks on certain stocks. Overall, I do believe that premium bonds can serve a purpose in a well diversified portfolio. It's a very secure investment in an otherwise risky market. It still gives you the opportunity of income, even though it's likely to be a very small amount of income. And most importantly, you can access your money at any time. So you're ready to capitalize on any other opportunities that do arise. So premium bonds for me still get the thumbs up. Let me know what you're thinking guys do you own premium bonds have you had any good wins or are they a product that you avoid that's all for today i'll see you next time on trader uk